Today we're going to be trying some awesome techniques we've never tried before and getting some stunning results. I'm going to be painting up a squad of Necrons. Well, I'm going to be painting a classic and vibrant Ultramarine. I'm going to be tackling something I've never done before, which is a grimdark compendium style Dark Angels interrogator chaplain that I'm going to convert up and then paint with these new techniques. And all of this is possible thanks to the new Kickstarter and range of books by Colorful Kraken. These awesome books are designed to bring advanced painting techniques to you and and simplify the process of learning. Get better at speed painting, try new things, get some awesome tips and advice, all of that and more in this video. It's, it's tabletop, tabletop time. time. Let's get cracking. Colorful cracking. So I'm really excited about this project that we're working together with Colorful Kraken. And I think it's because I have a love of art books. I'm kind of like a semi collector and being able to see these art books that are full of miniatures and tutorials is something that I'm totally into. So I'm super on board for this project and I'm really excited to get started. So the tutorial I'm following along with today is one done by Arnau Lazaro. He's painted up some Necrons and he's done it really fast and I'm gonna try my best to do it in the same amount of time to the same method. So far, I'm really happy with how my guys are turning out. They are looking a little bit darker than what I was expecting, but I know that there's a step coming up where I'm gonna put silver over the top of them, so I'm not too worried. I think adding the two coats of the Reichland Flesh Shade has really helped bring these guys out, and they look a lot closer to the new color scheme that they've done for Necrons. I also know I'm gonna add some silver highlights to this guy, so even if he is looking a little bit dull right now, I know he's gonna pop in the next step. Overall, the tutorial has been really clear and detailed into how I should do each step and approach painting these models. I haven't got too much longer to go and the tutorial is about halfway through, so I've just got to keep painting and we'll see how we go. So my models at this point are completely dry and all of the washes are done so I can move on to the next stage, which is the fluorescent green. And this is a part that I'm really excited for because I've kind of wanted to try doing these glowing effects before, but I've never really got the opportunity to. So I'm excited to follow this tutorial and see if I can get it to work for myself. Once this was dry, I went over the top with the technical gel paint that's listed in the tutorial. This stuff has a really interesting consistency. It's again, more like gel versus a paint. And it did take a couple of layers for me to get this right. I then had to go ahead and add on some algae splotches onto the Necrons. This required a little bit of freehand, but I just decided to kind of treat it like the rust projects I had done in the past and splotch this onto areas I wanted to keep focus. So my Necrons are looking pretty good at this point, but the next stage has me absolutely terrified. I have to tear up paper towel and put it in PVA and then put it on the models. Now, I've done a little bit of green stuffing and altered models before, but for some reason, paper towel and PVA absolutely scares me. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to achieve the same look. I'm gonna take my time, follow the tutorial and see if I can get it to work. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> And moving on to the final steps was flocking. I really do enjoy this part of the hobby process. There's something about adding plant life to a base or just even an environment that makes it really pop and stand out. So I wanted to absolutely cover these Necrons in different sort of swampy plant life to make it look really lived in and like they'd just come out of the swamp and were super gross. And I was really happy with this process. And with those final touches, we're pretty much done. And here they are, my Necrons are all done and they look super spooky and swampy and I am actually in love with them. I think that this tutorial was really cool, really easy. I did tend to go over time just a little bit because I got a little bit lost in the process. Either way, I'm super happy with how these turned out and we'll check out a bit later in the video how they turned out. So before we get cracking on with the rest of our speed paints, we thought we'd let you know how you can get access to not only these tutorials, but other amazing guides on painting stunning miniatures. We are very colorful today. <laughs> colorful Kraken's Miniature Painting Made Easy is a series consisting of three detailed books and a set of custom miniatures aimed at painters of all skill levels with a focus on achieving amazing results fast. These books are jammed packed with 40 tutorials taking you from beginner to advanced and everything in between. Book one, The Basics, covers everything you need to start miniature painting. Book two, Speed Painting with Acrylics, features 20 curated tutorials by the world's best painters, teaching their tips and tricks on speed painting models in under 90 minutes. Book three, Speed Painting Beyond Acrylics, 
features 20 tutorials on using oil, enamels, dry pigments and more to achieve amazing results in under 90 minutes. All three volumes will be available in English, French and Spanish for the Kickstarter. We mentioned custom miniatures and that's right, and they're in hard plastic. So if you want some amazing minis designed as the perfect tools to practice your new tutorials on, these sweet sculpts will be available in physical form. The Kickstarter is now live for you to check out and has a range of pledges for you to choose from and add-ons as well. We're having so much fun following along with these tutorials and think this project is a fantastic initiative to help get painters outstanding results fast. So please go check out Colourful Kraken's Kickstarter, which is live right now. Links are in the description down below. And just a huge thank you to Colourful Kraken for sponsoring this video and also for putting together these volumes for everyone to learn from and bringing together all these amazing painters. I believe it might be Murray's turn. That's right, let's see what he can do. It's my turn to paint something now, and I have our little Stern Guard Sergeant here, and I'm gonna be following Will Hand's vibrant Son of Medusa tutorial, except I'm gonna mix things up. I'm gonna paint this as an ultramarine, so I'm gonna swap a whole lot of greens around for blues. It's time to set this guy up to do a little bit of spraying and get him ready for the painting session. Okay, we finished our brown step, making all the dirt that's gonna be revealed later on in the process as being all the stuff showing up through the cracks. So we're gonna give it a quick blast with the matte varnish, and then after that, we'll apply chipping medium and allow all that to dry. Now, after applying the mediums and the varnishes, it's on to painting the actual color of the Space Marine. In my case, all these blues. And I'm feeling more impressed that in each stage, Will has subsequently included instructions on both the angle and how lightly you should apply each layer using the airbrush. This is, of course, very helpful to someone who's experienced, but also invaluable to someone who is just starting out. So I'm up to the final step of the airbrushing or the inks. And at the moment, I feel like my choice of color has been just a little bit pale, a bit desaturated. It doesn't have quite the vividness of the green that Will has used. However, I think this last step will bring a lot back, hopefully. Let me know what you think about my adaptation of this recipe. Without further ado, let's just, uh, <laughs> let's have a go. <laughs> now for my final pop of color on the blue, I've decided to go for a fairly aqua color. And I feel that perhaps I apply it just a little bit too harshly. And while this would be really easy to rectify by just applying a very thin glaze of an ultramarine blue just to bring it all back, I decided that's sort of against the spirit of it just a little bit. And this sort of shows off my attempt. So I'm gonna push ahead and start doing all the chipping that I'm really looking forward to doing. I'm just gonna use a piece of wire to scratch away really artistically, but also just a bit roughly, where I think battle damage would occur on each of the leading edges of the armor, making sure to try and do as little as possible because I think going overboard with weathering sort of detracts from your overall effect and can undo some of your hard work. After that, it's simply gonna be a matter of going through the rest of the tutorial and painting all the guns, little details, ribbons and tassels. About now, I want to shout out this little recipe for gold. I actually love this. It's a dark blue mixed with any gold and you get this really cold metallic appearance. This looks super cool and I'm going to use this a lot more often in the future. In terms of a tutorial, this one was really interesting in that it required quite a lot of precision and maybe just a bit of advanced knowledge, but otherwise the way it approached everything it was laid out in a way that I think would be easily accessible to anyone wanting to try their hand, and I'd encourage them to do so. We used chipping effects, airbrushing zenithals to create really cool power armor. I learned a new recipe for painting gold, and we had a really cool time doing it all. Hopefully you like my ultramarines. Overall, I think I was relatively successful. I would definitely tweak things in the future, but for a first attempt on a very curious painting guide. I'm really happy with what I ended up with. But now I get to hand you over to the next person in line and the next tutorial. As we flick through these tutorials and work through them, it amazes me just how many talented painters have been involved in this project. And looking through the books, it's really easy to find someone whose style meshes with yours and who you want to learn from. It's something that's super unique and not something I've seen anywhere else where so many prominent artists in our field have been collected into one project to make some really cool 
cool tutorials for everyone. It's fantastic to see. I'd love to know whose tutorial you're excited to check out. So my paint job today is a little bit involved. If you've never heard of the Grimdark style, let me briefly introduce you to it. Grimdark is an incredibly evocative, dirty, organic and natural way of painting miniatures. There's a very medieval and occult vibe in the color palette, which is embodied by four core colors, which are okra, ivory, crimson, and black. I've always wanted to try doing Grimdark properly and that Blanchian style. And amazingly in volume three of the Colorful Kraken series, Kendon from Grimdark Compendium actually does four tutorials, which is absolutely amazing. I'm gonna be going straight for the most advanced one, which isn't advised for most people, but hey, I want some bang for my buck and I'm just gonna give it a crack. So today I'm going to be following the tutorial to create a dark angel, but I want it to be uniquely mine. So the way I'm doing that is I'm making my own model and my own story. Every model should really tell a story on its own. So I'm making a now defunct miniature, an interrogator chaplain, a legendary character in the Warhammer universe. These dark angel chaplains go around hunting the fallen, bringing them in, interrogating them, pricking them with little needles and telling them to give up all their secrets. The basis for this conversion is going to be two models from the Indomitus box set. Let's get started. So as I just mentioned, a lot of Grimdark is about creating a narrative. When I began carving and kit bashing elements of the Judica and the chaplain models together, I was thinking about who this character was and where he was. Two things that I think really help with this narrative is the posing and the basing. And I decided to take that chaplain's crozier and instead of having it raised heroically, I had it lowered in a walking stance, which better reflected the hourglass of the Judica, indicating that the fallen's time is up. That just seemed perfect. But I decided I need to make a custom head. To do this, I got a resin skull and one of the Primera Space Marine faces with the respirator, but a bare head. This is so I could use the front of the skull and basically carve out a space behind the respirator and place in the skull. I wasn't too worried about the rest of this area because I'm going to green stuff a hood over it. So I don't need it to feel like it perfectly blends around the edges. Once these parts were all glued together and I was waiting for green stuff to prep, I set to work on that base. I used some corkboard to build up the bulk of the elements and then grabbed Gamer's Grass resin basing pieces from their ruined temple set, creating a rubble strewn stairway leading down that he's walking towards. He's descending towards his prey into the bowels of a place full of secrets. Is it a shattered chunk of Caliban? Is it the bowels of the rock itself as he goes to interrogate Luther? Who knows? That's the vibe I wanna evoke in this grimdark piece. I laid a hood over his head and just used a sculpting tool to create some folds and fit it seamlessly around the body. Standing still like a statue over long vigils, prayer and rites of secrecy, these marines often stand resolute in ceremony. So I decided to place some burnt out candles and old candle wax on his shoulders. As if legion serfs or maybe himself in rites of prayer or benediction, place these candles on his armor and allow them to burn down for the duration of that ritual. But now I've got to wait for it to dry and then come back and paint it. So my conversion is dry. It's all finished and I'm ready to embark on the painting process. This is going to be a journey involving the airbrush and a mask, gas mask thing, whatever. So uh, there'll be a little talking for the next few steps as I do some stuff I've never done before. Heaps of streaking grime washes, using super glue as paint, texture, scratching, weathering, all this new stuff I'm gonna tackle thanks to the four tutorials that you're meant to follow in order. Hopefully it works out, wish me luck, let's do it. As I start to tackle Kendon's tutorial, I begin to realize a few things. One, there's a lot of subtlety and advancement in this that I lack at this stage. So I'm going back and looking at the three previous tutorials to add context. These tutorials are designed to build on top of each other so that you learn all the elements until you get to the final one. No, I haven't done that. So I'm dancing around a little bit here in territory I'm unfamiliar with and it's fun. It's fun to do that. But definitely there are a lot of ugly phases. As I apply bright colors and then pull them back with streaks Grime. One such being when I use these lacquer based metallics that I've never used before, just have insanely good coverage but are unforgiving with their flow and their spill. They're also incredibly bright and look garish on this dark model, but I have to trust in the process and know that as each step completes and we pull it together with grimes and weathering, that overall this is going to look awesome. So let's stay the course and add some more grime. 
Smashing through the rest of this process was a journey. Using super glue on a model, absolutely wild. And it was really interesting to try a whole bunch of things for the very first time. But it did become evident that this was the very first time I'd ever tried anything like this. And a lot of these techniques are described as being quite advanced and requiring a lot of practice, precision, and patience to pull off. So I'm gonna be honest, I'm not 100% happy with this. Even so, we got an okay looking grimdark tabletop model, but yeah, as I said, there's a lot of areas that just lack the pop and professionalism that grimdark compendium can pull off. But, but hey, that's their bread and butter. This is my first time. Let's take one last look of all of our models and you too can learn how to do it much better than me by supporting Colorful Kraken's Kickstarter. Go check it out, grab those books for yourself. You'll be able to follow along at your own pace rather than breakneck speed. We'd like to thank all of our patrons for all your support and allowing us to do what we do. It's because of you guys we can make awesome videos and push beyond the stars. So there you go, we all learnt a lot and uh, I gotta say, you only get better at something by trying new things. So please go check out Colourful Kraken, the Kickstarter is live now. There's over 40 tutorials by some of the world's best painters, which ain't me. <laughs> so if you wanna go on the path to getting towards that level of quality, this is an amazing way to get you there. Yeah, I think if we proved anything is that anyone can learn something new. So, go experience it for yourself. Link's in the description again, and thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.